Hello to you all and thanks for joining me in your lunch hour. Very much appreciated. I hope you've all got yourself a nice sandwich and a drink um, and are ready to uh, be given a process which I think will enable you to have your best year yet in 2013. Um, the first uh, part of what I'm going to do is basically just to get my background out of the way whilst I wait for everyone else to join in so they don't miss any of the nitty gritty. Uh, so if you've heard this before, I do apologise. Um, Basically, Nick Jervis Lister non-practicing, as I have to put. Otherwise, I will be taken outside, put in front of a brick wall and shot dead by the SRA because that's how uh, we're dealt with these days. Um, my background was I decided to enter the law late, having had an early sabbatical. Um, I didn't go to university. I worked and then I went off and had my sabbatical sailing around the Greek islands. Hence why you often see boats on, uh, on my emails. And um, the... Um, I decided that I ought to get a proper job at some point, so I entered the law as a trainee legal executive, um, worked my way up and had a full caseload within a couple of years, started specialising at that time in personal injury, um, but there wasn't enough personal injury work for me, so the firm I worked for, a small uh, four office, eight, nine partner firm, said, well, you go and get your work and we'll give you some marketing budget. So I did that successfully, then got an assistant working with me as well and kept my sec two secretaries busy. Um, and then took over the rest of the firm's marketing and realised that was what I enjoyed most. You know, doing the firm's marketing was, was where my future lay. But I was only sort of three or four years into my eight years of qualifying to become a solicitor. Um, so once I'd finished that by doing two years part-time at Guildford, I uh, decided to go and work for a bigger firm in Bristol where I knew I'd get some uh, something of a profile because I was hidden away in a smallish firm in Reading and, and no one knew me. So I moved to a bigger firm, managed to get the opportunities I was looking for and, and did lots of lectures um, and wrote a book about claiming against uninsured drivers so that when I left I was uh, well placed and people knew about me and, and I was able to launch my consultancy after a year of running a promotional merchandise business selling Mickey Mouse um, pens with company logos on and umbrellas and everything else because I didn't think I could launch straight into my marketing consultancy telling you guys lawyers how to market their practice and that solicitors how to market their practice apologies if I offended anyone by saying the word lawyer but it seems to be more universally used now um, certainly by the public and, and that's what it's all about um, so I uh, decided I'd run this franchise and did okay and turned over about 50% more than anyone else had done in the first 12 months of a similar franchise uh, but the profit margins were absolutely horrendous. Um, so it was nothing to get excited about. So my initial plan of keeping it running with someone else doing the, the legwork didn't <laughs> didn't carry on. Um, and we'll talk about margins later because it's one of the things that, that generally, until the government completely wipes out the ability for solicitors to make any profits in this country, which obviously they're doing their damnedest to with personal injury and other elements at the moment, um, there are still good margins, which makes things a lot easier. So I ran the franchise for a year, launched Samson Consulting, and here we are. So hopefully at that point, um, everyone is on board. Um, and let's crack on with, with what we're going to talk about today, which is getting you to have your best year yet in 2013. Um, and I think Einstein says it nicely that you're not going to have a different result this year if you do the same things that you've done for the last few years. Um, and I don't know about you, but in running my business, there were, there were a couple of years very early on, um, and it takes a while to get a business going, um, there were a couple of years where perhaps it wasn't going as well as I hoped. Um, and I remember saying to my wife each New Year's Eve, well, this year's definitely going to be better. And I went back and I did largely the same as I'd done the year before and, and ended up with largely the same results. And remember repeating that empty promise again the following New Year, which which kind of broke me a little bit, which is why for the last few years I've, I've made sure that actually when I say I'm going to do better the following year, I have done because I do things differently. Um, and that involves for me investing in a, a consultant and, and using someone to help me tell me where I'm going wrong. Um, because when you're in your own business, you're often too close to it to see the obvious. And whilst I might tell my clients what they should be doing and, and I know it will work, I don't see it for myself because I'm too close. So if you want to have the best year in 2013, you can't keep doing what you've done for the last few years. Something needs to change. And what I want to give you today is a system um, that you can use to help you to have 2013 the best year yet. Um, so we're going to look at some marketing tactics, uh, but more importantly than that, it's not so much about the tactics. The method I'll give you to follow um, will allow you to work out what's good and what's not. Um, so I'm not going into the detail because I'm giving you a system that actually means you don't need to know the detail. And if you try and get to know the detail, you're, you're wasting your valuable time on something that you shouldn't really be learning all about. Um, I'm going to give you practical steps about working so you can work out what is a good tactic. Um, 
and obviously focus on why it's important to do that now with all the changes, all the new competition, um, everyone seeming to be interested in the legal services market. Um, what You've got to change what you've been doing, you've got to get better systems and you've got to fight to be ahead of the game. And you know, Bear in mind that my consultancy practice works largely with your traditional high street type firm, some niche commercial firms uh, that only offer, offer one or two commercial areas, um, but, but a lot of high street businesses uh, with one or two sole decision makers at the top that, that get on and do things. It's in my interest that you will survive, otherwise I'm not going to have a client base in the future. So. Um, the reason I do these webinars is to give useful advice now that you can take away and use whether you engage my services or not, but also so that you can see the way I think about marketing so that if you do need someone at the future, you can come back to me, you know what I do. Um, I'm going to give you a gift, which is this, this process, this system to follow at the end. Um, and I'm also going to introduce you to a brand new way of working with me, which I don't think anyone else in the UK is doing, which you are completely free to um, ignore as your choice. I hope that some of you will find it of interest and, and get in touch and I'll tell you how to later on. But the main purpose of this talk, the majority of it is about how to get your marketing working better so that 2013 is a better year for you. Um, so on that basis, please, can I ask you just to give me a bit of undivided attention for the next 45, 50 minutes. Um, it always amazes me when I have meetings with solicitors and suddenly the text goes or a mobile goes, an email comes in, they pick it straight up and read it, even though they're paying me 1500 2000 pounds for the day. That's so important they have to pick it up and not listen to the guy that they're paying to help with their business. So you know, you're, you're getting this free, but please don't assume that it's of no value. I believe it will be of great value to you. So turn off your emails, shut down emails and, and give me some attention. I, I promise to make it worthwhile. First question is, are you riding the marketing law firm marketing roller coaster and how do you get off it? Um, now, I think you'll agree my computer wizardry when it comes to drawing skills is second to none. Um, I'd like to assure you that my marketing skills are somewhat better than my ability to master this drawing tool that I've got. Um, but I hope that, that you get the gist of it. So what happens with the marketing roller coaster um, is that Mr. Lawyer start, Mr. Slister, I'll stop saying that, starts at the bottom here and he's not busy enough and he needs to do something. So he starts doing some marketing and that starts to work. So he does a bit more and it starts to work and he rises to the top of the roller coaster. And at the top of the roller coaster, what happens is he gets so busy that he stops marketing. He stops doing the things that have made made the clients come to him and things start to slide off. About this point, he thinks, well, that's quite nice. I've actually got a bit of breathing space. It's been a busy few weeks, months, um, so I don't mind that. But he doesn't start the marketing again. So gradually he slides down the slope to the bottom of the roller coaster again um, when it all kicks off and he starts marketing like mad because suddenly the cash flow is going wrong and, and things aren't as good as they should be. Get to the back of the top, rinse and repeat three or four times ad infinitum. And, and I see this so often. And the only way you are ever going to get past this is making sure that you have absolutely nothing to do with your day-to-day -day marketing. By that I mean you can't be getting involved in changing things on your website, you can't be getting involved in managing a Google AdWords campaign, you can't be getting involved in writing all of the content that needs to go on your website to make it a worthwhile resource that keeps bringing clients to you month after month. Because if you do that, the minute that the other stuff gets in the way, whether it's management stuff or it's client stuff or it's accountancy stuff, the marketing I know from experience, from my own experience of running a full case loads in marketing, the marketing is the first thing to stop happening. And you cannot afford to get to, for that to happen or you will never get off this marketing roller coaster. So the way forward for you is to work out this process that I give you is to follow it and start automating all of your marketing so that it happens with or without you. Um, if you're off for three months, the marketing still is done, it still happens and clients still keep coming to your door. How do you do this? Well, you pick a marketing tactic and we'll look at how you're going to do that. You get it up and running and working and then you get someone else managing it on a monthly basis. Um, so you're not in charge of it all of the time. And, and the way to choose suppliers is very easy. Um, and as much as you can do what I did when we when we had a new kitchen some years back, um, we didn't know the first thing about a new kitchen. I've never never had a new kitchen, so we had about five, six, or seven suppliers come round, um, and each of them I'm sure could have done a great job. But we found that by asking all sorts of questions, we learned more and more about what made a good kitchen and and what we wanted from it. So that by the time we saw the seventh one, we we really knew how it worked, and we got a fantastic kitchen which we still love to bits now. It's not massive by any stretch, but it works for us. Um, 
and that's the thing about suppliers there's suppliers out there that will do this work for you if you don't if you choose a marketing tactic and you're not an expert in it interview enough suppliers and you'll get to know which are the important questions and you'll get to find the supplier that's right for you and if you're sitting there thinking well no i can't afford to engage suppliers um the old saying you don't have a dog and bark yourself um, this is this this is shadow, um, and uh, sorry to John if you're on. I didn't have a picture of of your dog to put on here, or I would have done. John's a, a solicitor who I know is on this webinar, um, but I'd gladly put your dog on there. Maybe you'll have to send me one, John. Um, so you don't have a dog and bite yourself. The margins, luckily, that you make are very good, and they enable you to uh, engage suppliers who will do a much better job than you because they are experts in what they do. You're an expert. At the legal service you provide you fully understand how to do it very well and you can charge two three four hundred pounds an hour depending where you are in the country for it now bear in mind that that a supplier for most marketing tactics whether it's having a new website built or paying someone to manage your pay-per-click campaign or paying someone to do search engine marketing or paying someone to write content for you for direct mail flyers or paying a designer to design an advertisement or a flyer or a brochure that person will only ever be charging anything from £15 an hour to £50 an hour, maybe at the most £100 an hour. So it would be complete insanity for you to try and do your marketing, become a master of it for every tactic. Your job should be to engage the right supplier that charges far less per hour than you do, that will manage the process much better than you could because this is all they do day in, day out, and will get you the results that you want. And your job is then to manage that supplier's figures, to make sure every month that the performances are getting better, and they're getting you more leads, and what they're doing is working, and to refine it with them, but to let them go off and do the work. Until you get to the point that you let go and let someone else do this for you, you will never get to the point of having your best year yet and so many solicitors I meet and you are very intelligent people but so many solicitors say, oh, I'm going to change my website I'm going to do it myself and build my WordPress theme and, and that would be much better and cheaper for me it won't because it will never be as good as a website designer could do it and it will never have the functionality that it needs to be a great website that someone could build for you at 15 25 30 pounds an hour while you should be earning 50 pounds an hour and if you think oh I don't have that money at the moment because I haven't got enough work uh, my, if I was in your position, I would be taking a loan to get me to the point where I had that money that I could do all the things that I know will bring me all the clients I need to be as profitable as I want to be. It's as simple as that. You cannot. I, I tried for years to, to teach clients to do every aspect of their marketing and, and to get heavily involved in nitty gritty, but actually found that as soon as they got busy, it stopped. They went back to the rolling marketing roller coaster and they started riding it again hard and they ended up with not enough work to do. Um, so, you know, I realized that, that it just doesn't work because the, the, naturally the first thing you want to do is get back to the legal stuff. Um, so as soon as you're busy, you get back to that as the marketing stops. So, you know, I'm convinced the system that will work for you and give you your best year yet is engaging someone else to do all of your marketing tactics. So how do you choose them? There's so many different marketing tactics that you can choose. There's so many different ways of promoting your service, of getting out there. Brochures, and I'll talk a bit about brochures later. Um, you can do direct mail. People have stopped sending stuff in the post now. Social media. Oh, that's that's hot, isn't it? Well, it's not that hot, and I've got a question on that later. Um, Google, radio advertising, um, your website. That's my website, but you have one similar, I'm sure. Um, search marketing, uh, well, that's Google AdWords, rather. The uh, Do you remember that thing, the yellow pages? That used to work, apparently. It used to bring in clients, but uh, it doesn't anymore, which is why it's now the size of my little finger um, and mostly sits in people's recycling boxes pretty quickly. Um, so how do you choose marketing tactics? You need a system, a system that you can follow that will actually make sure you get the right marketing tactics on board. Now, there's the, I call it push-pull marketing. Ideally, um, there's a form of marketing which works much, much better than others. And I think the peacock's got it sussed here. He fans his tail and he waits for his mate to come to him and uh, it works very well he's a very pretty boy and the lady comes running over and says i pick you off we go and everyone's happy in nature um that's what i call pull marketing so he's using attraction marketing to get people to come to him on the other hand some species are a little less elegant about how they mate and they just get on with it um as this chap found um and this is definitely what we call push marketing you're getting in someone's face to the point that that you're trying to make them do something when it's not even in their mind and Sadly, you know, 
buying legal services is not a very sexy thing to do you know buying a tv or some gadgets or buying a holiday that that's quite appealing quite enticing you might push me off to your site to look at that but if it's selling legal services i need to be in the right right frame of mind and have the right mindset to say yes i'm going to go off and buy this legal service i've made the decision now who's the best person for me so we're going to get a bit interactive now, um, and I want you to, to look at those types of marketing on the screen. So we've got banner advertisements, so that's like all of these here, Virgin Media, Wayne Allen Flooring, this is my local newspaper website, you can have a Google Yahoo account, and you could get British Gas Round, all while you're looking at your, your local um, newspaper website. So banner advertisements, newspaper advertisements, radio and social media and yellow pages. On this poll, which will now pop up on your screen by the wonders of technology, I would like you to ask, um, to answer the question, are these types of push or pull marketing, are these um, methods of marketing that attract people, or do, the, do they make people um, go off and do what you want them to do? And I can see that the votes coming in. It's all anonymous. You won't be held accountable. I won't pull anyone up and embarrass you. Um, so let's, let's see what you come up with. I'll just let that run for a moment. Anyone that hasn't pressed it, I'm going to shut it down in five seconds, so quickly click away for me. I can see nearly 100% of people have voted. Thank you very much. And let's close it there. And as you can see, 59% um, of you said it's pull attraction marketing, as I call it, 41% said push. Um, now. I say very much, and I'm a bit cheeky, I say very much it's push marketing. You're trying to get in my face and make me do something that I'm not thinking about. Um, now, there's a couple of things in there that I put in deliberately as red herrings. Newspaper advertisements, you say, well, I choose to go off to it. But your, your primary mindset when reading that newspaper is to read the newspaper. Um, so if you see an advertisement, you're still trying to interrupt me and get me to go off there. Yellow pages, you do go to find a phone number, but no one uses it anymore, which is why I'm there. But the other, the other forms on there, banner advertisements, I'm reading my Times newspaper website. I'm not thinking about buying a mobile phone. You're trying to get me to do something um, that I haven't even thought about doing. So you're very much trying to push me off in that direction. And the type of marketing that I want to talk to you about mostly is pull and attraction marketing. Um, so that will include client referrals and recommendations. This is one of your clients being asked by one of their friends or family, do you know a good solicitor? And then saying, well, yes, I do actually. This solicitor actually has kept in touch with me since I last used their service six years ago. And they were really good. And their name is this because I can find it in the email box, which also covers the, the email newsletter, which I'm certain you're all sending on a monthly basis. Um, Google AdWords. So go into Google and we'll look at this in a bit. Typing in that you're looking for a solicitor in Bath or a solicitor in Middlesbrough. Um, finding that solicitor, liking their website and getting in touch with them. Someone asking a, a business referral person, an estate agent or an accountant or someone that hopefully isn't charging you for the privilege but which you have a good working relationship with. And when a business client says, do you know a good commercial solicitor and they recommend you, you are through the door, you're a shoe in um, And search engine marketing appearing in the free listings as it were, although you have to pay a lot to do that. Um, but we'll look at those in more detail. So how do you find out about the marketing tactic? The next stage of our system is I want you to find attraction marketing. Um, the next question is how do you find out about the marketing tactic you're thinking about? Um, the first two points, is it a telephone call or a spam email? I'm, I'm constantly amazed. I, I've got my marketing solicitors membership and, and members of marketing solicitors allowed to email me and say, what do you think of this, Nick? Should I go ahead? Should I try it? Nine times out of 10 when people send me something to review, um, it's come in from a completely spam email. Someone's built, bought a database of solicitors and just hit the, hit the send button, sent it to 100,000 lawyers um, and, and said, you should be buying this. Um, and my question for this is, if it's such a good form of marketing and so effective, why is the person selling it having to resort to spam email uh, or a cold telephone call to sell it to you? Can it really be that good? You know, let your intuition guide you. If someone's having to sell something really hard um, by spamming and constantly spamming, and you've never asked them to email you, can it really be that good? And lots of lots of businesses are doing that at the moment. There's lots of Facebook sales going on and saying this is brilliant. Um, I don't think it is. Uh, there's lots of people being sold NHS staff website membership and civil service membership, um, and you're a preferred supplier. Um, is that really? Uh, great is it that good if they're selling it in that way um, I particularly love the search engine marketing companies that, that email me and tell me that my website can't be found on Google 
If it can't be found on Google, how did you find it? Do email me in the first place. <laughs> Seriously? And if you're that good at search engine marketing, why aren't you at the top, number one, for search engine marketing? What's going on? Um, so you've got to ask yourself how you've heard about this marketing tactic. If you've done a website search yourself because you know that this is a good thing to do and you're looking for someone to help you to do it, or you've been recommended to it by a trusted advisor or a sister, that's a much better way of looking at it. Te cold telephone calls and spams, nine times out of ten, they're selling it that way because it's not a good tactic. The next question is, is it shiny and new? Is this something that's, that's fantastic that, that you've never heard about before, but it's the latest thing like social media was a couple of years ago? Um, I haven't found one solicitor yet that has made a million pounds selling services from Facebook. I have found solicitors that are making that sort of money selling their services from their website. Um, so that tells you what I think about social media. But there is a use for it, and I'll come on to that. The final point is, can you track its results? So these NHS um, websites that are being sold heavily at the moment to the legal profession, can you track the results? Well, if you can't, if you really can't send it off to a different phone number, a website, Oh, somewhere completely different that you can actually say hand hand on heart at the end of that year we spent five thousand pounds but we made fifteen twenty thousand pounds in fees if you can't do that don't do it there's no point in this day and age you cannot be spending money on and often there these things are a thousand pounds and if you don't take it your next door neighbor is going to go in and then you're going to lose all of that work that will come for it which is nothing um, if you can't track it 100 percent don't do it um, don't you know plan your marketing you're not going to be doing all of this so you've got time to sit back and plan what you should be doing which marketing tactics you should use so these ones that come across your desk that look too good to be true guess what they normally are so don't do them don't be tempted your website right I'm going to ask someone in a minute for um for a website address so if you have if you would like me to um live critique your website then uh, by the powers of technology, I will do that. So use the question box, type in your www for me, and in a minute, I will um, go through your website and give you my opinions on what you could do to improve it. I'll tell you whether it's brilliant, um, but it's much nicer to work on live site. If no one puts their website in, I'll just go off and find one. Um, but if you want a free review, I normally charge for that service, then you are welcome. Just pop your details in the question box for me now. Um, so your website, even if you're not doing any website marketing, if you have a bad website, you are losing business from it. Because if anyone refers you to a client um, and they go, the first thing they do, as you do, as everyone does, is go and have a look at your website. Now, if I'm told that ABC Smithers Jones listers are the best at this service and say it's employment law, and I go there and they've got half a page on employment law and no other pages on the website and it doesn't look very good, I'm not likely to trust that referral. So even if you're not marketing your website, you'll be losing work if it's not good enough. Um, attraction pull is it, it is the best form of attraction pull marketing. Someone goes onto Google, types in, I'm looking for a solicitor in um, Bristol, and they go onto a website and they find one and they get in touch with you if you do things right. It's the easiest form of marketing to automate because you can find good suppliers that will do it for you. And the biggest beauty of it all in terms of the marketing roller coaster and getting off that is that it works 24 hours a day, seven days a week with or without you if you've automated and outsourced the process. So let's see if anyone's put in their web address. I have, I have d-ws.co.uk. So let's go and have a look at these things www.d tws I'll get there in a minute you can tell it's live can't you so let's have a look at this website and let's just go back to my slide a moment two jobs of your website first job is to get people there and the second job is to stop them leaving before they've got in touch with you um, and all of these things come into play here, and I'll flick between the, the website and um, those points which are important. And the first thing we do when you come on a website is we are, uh, we naturally, eyes have been watched, and we train to read across in an F shape. So we come across the top, and we come down the left, then we come across the middle, um, and we read in an F shape. Um, so nice, clean design, DWS. Um, we've got solicitors there. Now, I always find this very interesting. I would be inclined to say that the fact that you're a slip, oh, good, we get to see the front door as well. Um, and it's got something in it apart from blinds. Well done to DWS. Um, 
Uh, it's got brochures, it's looking good. I like this, I might just stop and watch the video. But uh, coming back to the design, so many solicitors' websites I look at don't actually have the word solicitor in their header. And I think you're missing a trick if you're not doing that because it is the benefit of your regulation that you are solicitors, you are a profession. And so many have the logo but without the word solicitors. So I'd be inclined to make much more prominence of that because I think it's one of your unique selling points. Um, so that should be in the header. We've got a contact number here. I would be inclined to say that make make it clear that this is a free inquiry, no obligation. I can get in touch with you. It's not going to cost me fifty pounds, um, because there is still this perception um, that that it costs to get in touch with the solicitor. Um, I like the left navigation, big fan of navigation being on this side because it's so much easier to use than at the top. Because what happens when you're using navigation at the top is as soon as you scroll down, it's gone, and you'll say yes, the left is gone as well. But it's much quicker to get back to that. Um, and I might drop these items under here so that they're a bit closer to the actual content rather than right at the top. Um, particularly like the fact that we've got a, an inquiry form on the right hand side here. Again, I'd test rather than saying request a callback, um, I put free no obligation inquiry, off you go, add some details um, and just put that to send free inquiry. They know you're going to get back in touch with them, but it's interesting how changing these words, and I've tested ad infinitum, send works much better than submit. You'll get more people filling in the form and sending it to you than you will get them submitting you. Bizarre, quirky thing, but it's just submission sounds a bit more formal. Send is, especially if it says send free inquiry, I'm not committing to anything. Get me on the phone, then sell your services, and then I'll commit to something. Um, so that's what I do. But the, the next point is I'm not so concerned about the home page because hardly every, anyone ever lands on it. So most listeners I speak to get very concerned about the home page. But I would say very few people actually land on it. If you're doing your, your job well, they should be landing on the page that's of interest to them because they'll type in Will's solicitor Lester and they'll land on this page. Um, so we, I've done that. Imagine I've typed Will's solicitor Lester. I've landed on this page. Suddenly the design's changed. Um, and it might be because I'm using Chrome, but the website should work the same on each of them. I'm not a fan of using the full width of the page. I'd much rather go back to what we had before, which was... Um, just, just using the standard width as it does there. So the fact it changes, if I have gone for the home page, confuses me a bit. Why have we suddenly got much bigger? Um, I then, so I'd go back to the size, I'd have much more information content in here, and, and, and I can argue with solicitors till they're blue in the face that um, you don't want, that they'll tell me you don't want too much content, but let me promise you this, if you don't have at least 400 words of content on every page, you will never or very rarely get any traffic to it naturally or organically or free more importantly um, so coming back to my um, list the design we've talked about it's a nice overall design i wouldn't have it changing different size layout we've talked about the f shape and that's most of the boxes are covered there we've got the free inquiry form on the right which is absolutely where it should be um, and then the opp so which is one purpose per page the overriding purpose of most of your pages on your website should be to get me to get in touch with you um, so am i going to get in touch with you and give you my my business um, at the end of every page you need to repeat your call to action there needs to be more com content all about me so it starts our services make it more about me if you're thinking of making a will these are the thoughts that are running through your mind you might be concerned about this you might be concerned about tax you might be concerned about the right gifts to the right people um, this is what we do this is how we'll work with you the costs are fixed we'll explain them fully when you have a free chat with us um, because you've always got to tick off the cost argument then at the bottom put free and obligation inquiry to speak further about your will requirements call us now on or complete the inquiry form and for interest for you nine times that well, we find 60 percent of people would rather fill in a form than pick up the phone so I'll repeat that because it's worth writing down 60% of people on our higher traffic legal websites would rather fill in a form than pick up the phone. So if you don't have inquiry forms on your website, you are missing out hugely. Um, there, there's other things I might do. Um, articles, I might push the articles down and have some testimonials here to back up your expertise. News and press, I'd probably um, just get the most important ones, have a couple of logos of well-known uh, papers and then click and go off to a page that then lists all of your press articles just so there's a bit more visual enticement there. Um, so that those are points which I hope you can all use for your website to make it work better because the reason I go on about websites so much is because they're easy to get working for you and they can bring in at least 50% of your work which is a good thing I think. If it's not doing that you are currently missing out. Um, website marketing. Now remember the process I'm suggesting I'm not suggesting you become an expert at this but obviously you need to know which parts I'm talking about so pay-per-click marketing if we are the last time we looked at was in Leicester so let's do Leicester solicitors and what you see here is Erwin Mitchell 
um, obviously a big player, their paper that is pay per click advertising, and they are um, appearing by paying. If I click on any of those, which I wouldn't do, because um, that would not be professional, and I don't that that would um, cost them money, and it could cost them anything. And also these ones on the right hand side are paying as well. It could cost them anything from a few pence to a few pounds. Now, if I go to the Google AdWords keyword tool, which is a great tool for doing research and showing you what people are actually using to type into Google. Um, so you do a search on Google AdWords keyword tool, then you click on it. And this will allow you to do some research about keywords. So you click the keyword ideas tab and let's just work on Esther Slister. And this tells you how many searches each month there are. So we've got 6,600 searches a month for Leicester Solicitor. And hopefully you can see on the right hand side there that that's suggesting you would pay £3.48 if I went off and clicked on one of these advertisements or any down the right. That is pay per click. Now, the reason you don't want to be doing this yourself, and, and, and I've taken pay per click campaigns from solicitors um, and made them better, is because. If you do it yourself, by and large, you probably will end up spending £3.48 because you're not an expert all doing all day, every day pay-per-click marketing. If you go to an agency, um, they they will probably be spending less than a pound to get the same traffic. Someone that knows what they're doing will get you three times the amount to click for your budget and they will easily, easily cover their costs, which is no more than sort of two or £300 a month. So it would be absolutely criminally insane to do your own pay-per-click advertising to manage that spend because unless you are spending all day every day reading about pay-per-click, you won't be able to do as well as the experts who, as I say, are charging probably 30 or £40 an hour, not the £200 an hour that you should be charging. Um, now, if we look, where are our friends at, at uh, DWS? Are they coming up on the left or right? No, but they are coming up on their free listing for their Google Maps, so good job. And they've even got a Google review. And um, if you're on Google Maps, getting Google reviews is good good use of your time. When you get a testimonial asking client to put it on there for you, um, does help because people are always looking for reviews. Um, so pay-per-click is appearing on the left and down the right-hand side. Search engine marketing is appearing in the places maps and on the left hand side. And very briefly, how can you tell if you've got a site that's that's very targeted? Um, which page is that sending me to? Is that the home page? DWS is sending me to their home page. So if I go, if I have a look at that, to look at um, how a page is set up, if you right click in the middle of the content and view page source, um, on every page, and I'm doing this live without a safety belt, thank goodness they've got one, you will find um, a title tag. So right click view page source and you can see here that rightly so, um, the thing they're targeting is their, their mage town, the fact that it's listers, the fact that they're in Leicester and their firm name. I would be inclined to put DWS listers and, and take out the legal services, but you can target up to three keywords per page. So the title is good, it's very targeted and focused. Um, the description is the firm name and Leicester and solicitors, so that's good. Um, and the keywords, which aren't really ranked by Google, but it's worth putting them in there, are quite focused as well. So good job. Um, if you go and look at your website, what I normally find on law firm's website is nearly every page targets the firm's name and just the word wills or probate. It needs to be much more specific. You need to do this keyword research. And if you're doing your will page, go will followed by your town name, will solicitor town name, and see what people are actually typing in and use what they're typing in to, to base your page content around. That will be much more effective. So that's pay-per-click and search engine marketing. Pay-per-click, as I say, you can get someone to do it and they will save you a fortune and make you get you more traffic for the same fee. Um, search engine optimization marketing, if you've been spending three, four hundred pounds a month, um, as often I'm told people are on search engine marketing, you're not getting a search engine marketing service. So often I speak to people and they say, well, I only spend three hundred pounds a month. I haven't really seen any results, but it's only three hundred a month. Well, stop spending that three or four hundred, that four or five thousand pounds a year. Get the same, get spend a profit budget, which for a decent SEO company, because it does take time to, to build traffic and to build links, you will be paying about twelve fifty to fifteen hundred pounds a month. But it will be the best 1250 to 1500 pounds a month because it will get you regular and increased traffic and more clients without you having to do anything because you've chosen a professional that does search engine marketing all day, every day to get your results. So the, the, those are 
two of the best areas of marketing because they're heavily attraction marketing. Someone is looking for a solicitor, types into Google solicitor followed by town name, finds your website. If you get me to the site, then you stop me from leaving because it's got testimonials, good content, strong call to action, free inquiry form. I am going to get in touch with you. It's then up to you to do your job and sell me your service. Um, that question here. Uh, says understand social media is very important to overall marketing strategy Twitter Facebook etc how do I do it well I mentioned earlier that it's not I'm not the biggest fan of social media because it won't change your life um, but Google uses social media to, media to check whether you're a real firm um, and you're, you're real you exist as opposed to someone that's just generating leads for other people or generating leads to sell display advertising on um, so they uh, so when you add new content to your website, post a link to it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you're a business lister, and that tells Google, okay, you've added content, good, and you posted your link on social, you look like you're a real business. So it's very useful for that. In terms of using it just to get traffic, as I said earlier, just not very sexy as a service, legal services. I'm not likely to talk about you with my friends unless I've had a, an amazingly bad or amazingly good experience. It's not a fashion brand. Um, one of the biggest Facebook pages is Netta Porter, which I'm told is a, a woman's fashion line. And, you know, it's very successful because people love to discuss decent clothing, but not really le legal services. Um, top three most important aspects of a successful website in terms of bringing in new work. Um, you've got to get traffic to it. Um, the overall function has to have one purpose per page. And you've got to stop people leaving it by making sure there's good content. It's easy to use testimonials, inquiry forms, free phone, telephone number. So those are, are definitely the key areas to focus on. Um, how do you do it? As I said, if you get my message, you shouldn't want to know how to do it. Um, but there's a lot to be done. And it, it, it is a science. Um, and it's not one you should be learning yourself because your time is too valuable. So outsourcing is the key step there. Um, Another uh, great marketing tactic for you for cross-selling your services involves a quick look at, uh, at the Africa BBC series, which finishes tonight. Um, and one of the episodes what focused on the baby green turtle uh, off the Cape, uh, born onto a beach off the Cape in South Africa. And uh, David Attenborough talks us through these these turtles scrabbling up from under the sand and they've got a four or five hundred meter rush to the uh, to the water and you think oh aren't they cute aren't they lovely until they suddenly start get, getting picked off the beach by yellow billed kites and pied crows which are like a big magpie um, and they start snaffling them up and, and having a lovely feast and and suddenly the cute little story isn't so cute anymore so David knows he's got to get back on board so he pans back up the beach past all the the melee of, of eaten uh, baby turtles up to the last baby green turtle to be born this is the last because david's telling us it's the last so it must be true david wouldn't lie sir david wouldn't lie so baby last baby turtle comes out and he, he knows this and his life depends on it because he runs straight for the water he isn't stopping he goes up something that must be the equivalent of a mountain for us slides down the other side he is really going for it and this is fantastic brad as i'm calling him david didn't name him big mistake should have named him this is brad we know it's brad brad is running fast and suddenly he gets stopped by a crab. A crab picks him up. No, hang on a minute, David. You didn't tell us that crabs are a predator of baby green turtles. You didn't warn us that we had to watch out for crabs. There's no crows around. And there's no kites around. Now we've got a crab pulling Brad back to his lair. And we're told that if Brad is taken into the lair, we will never see him again. He will be eaten by a crab family. So this isn't good. Just about go under the lair and he breaks free and a mighty break and brad is off and he skittles down to the water oh my goodness thank goodness brad is safe he's absolutely fine he's going to make it no 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 we've got new dangers now david tells us that the current is so strong it's smashing him against the bottom of the sand and it's pulling him back up and throwing him out the top and we can see brad is struggling he's just about to drown but then he breaks free. Fantastic. Brad's made it. He comes up for a breather, a hard-earned breather, I might say. Brad's done very well. Just as he comes up, yellow-billed kite hovers over, sees Brad, dives down for him. This is the last turtle. Brad's not going to make it. Dives down just in time, and off he goes into the, uh, into the watery sunset. And Brad's safe. Um, and, and the reason that, that, that we fell for that story is because David sold us the character of Brad. He's the last baby green turtle to come out. This is the last one. And he's made it down the beach, past the crab, past the kites, past the crows. He survived because we bought this story. And that's, that's the point that the BBC gets. It's all about stories. 
It's all about characters and the story behind it. And so they sold us this character. The truth probably is that Brad was about 20 different baby green turtles at different points of their strut down the beach. But they needed it to be one so that we would buy into this story because from a very early age, we're conditioned to buy stories. We're conditioned to be told stories. As soon as we're born, we get bedtime stories. We go through school, we've got to read, we're told more stories. In your adult life, when you meet someone new, what's the first thing you do? You ask them what their story is. Oh, what do you do for a living? If you meet a new couple, you ask their story. How did you meet? How did you get together? Because we're conditioned in stories and the best way for you to tell your story is to tell it through your email newsletters or monthly printed newsletters. But it's by telling your clients that there's a story to you and there's a story to your business and it's weaving stories into your email newsletters so that they're not just trite legal um, content that your clients aren't really interested in they're actually informative engaging and each time you send one you give them a bit more about your story they start to know that it's not just a law firm there's people in this law firm and if you if you get the balance right and you build these characters your email newsletter will work phenomenally well for you it's not simple it doesn't happen overnight but I suggest that you learn from the turtle and you start to use stories in your email newsletters if you're not doing it let me tick off the cons software too expensive no the best American software which you shouldn't be trying to send it from your own service because once you've got 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 people on your servers, your email will crash um, and it will be marked as spam. So you need to use a white label approved supplier. Um, the cost label is about $20 a month. Content's too difficult. You can outsource. You can outsource the content, but you can brief the person to include the story. So you don't have to write it all. You can get someone that's a better writer than you, that's a, an English graduate, to write your story for you and, and weave that story into each of your newsletters. Don't want to upset anyone. Well, sometimes you will, and that's okay. You know, it's one of the points I'll cover later. You do have to upset people, um, but as long as it's not the majority. Um, and one of the biggest problems is if you get to do it regularly. Well, if you've got a supplier that has to write it every month for you, or you buy my newsletters for solicitors' content and get it changed or updated, so you've got 10 basic articles, or you buy someone else's content, just make sure it's not heavily legal content because that's not what your clients want. Um, it will force you to send these regularly and it's the regularity that you need to make sure that you start to get works from it. The reasons I love it, easiest way of winning new instructions, easiest way of charging a reasonable fee for your service. Two good points, I think. Um, if someone comes back to you from something you've said in your newsletter uh, and asks you about a service, they're not shopping around. Um, they are coming back to you and saying, oh, I didn't know you did wills. Who does that? I need to sort one out. That's a much better client than someone that's just ringing around endlessly trying to get prices. So newsletters should be one of the tactics you look at. A um, couple of questions here. One is, um, for a small law firm, what is the best use of marketing pounds, generating new business or trying to get repeat business from existing clients? Um, my answer to that is both. Your email marketing and sending out flyers to your existing clients with letters that are already going out doesn't cost a lot of money, but it will generate extra work for you. Um, and secondly, if you've got a website that's not yet bringing in 50% of your work, then getting that working will get you lots of new clients as well who can then go onto the email list and become regular repeat clients. So it ticks both boxes. Um, and then the next question is about selling wills, elderly aren't online, aren't reading email newsletters. So it, it does mean, you know, marketing is about understanding your audience. And if your audience wants something printed and mailed to them, then send them something every three months, you know, a broken down version of what you send to everyone else that's relevant to their age group. Um, but you have to be where your clients are. So there's ways of doing that that, again, don't break the, break the bank. Um, other important marketing tactics, um, brochures, it amazes me that when selling a service which often costs hundreds or thousands of pounds, solicitors seem to think it's acceptable to have got rid of brochures. I don't think it is. And if you go into any co-op building society or their supermarkets, you'll find they've got lots of will brochures and lots of family brochures because they know that ultimately it's about people picking up these brochures and thinking, oh, OK, I didn't know about that. And because they have so many people going through their supermarkets, the volume will work for you. That means you have to keep sending them out. So with every letter, send a different send a brochure of the month. If you've got six or eight services, they're not going to see the same brochure until six or eight months later. But it's repetition that makes this stick. Oh, I know that Smithers Jones don't just do personal injury or business law, which I went to them for first. They do wills and they do conveyancing and they do everything else. Um, Direct mail is a great time to start doing direct mail now because people have stopped sending stuff out because it costs so much. Well, you, as I've said before, you have a, a margin business that allows you to spend some money on marketing. 
um, is, is one of the reasons why a personal injury became so dependent on referrals because solicitors had the margin, it was easier to pay someone else to get the work in than it was to do their own marketing. That looks like that door's being closed. Um, so, so you'll have to go back to the more traditional marketing. But you know, the funny part about that is when I left law, because I knew a lot of personal injury solicitors, I said I could get them work. I'd, I'd build their website. I'd do a direct mail campaign. I'd generate work for them. If it's their own brand, it would be a good experience. Um, and they all universally pretty much said, no, we don't want to do it. You build the claims company and we'll pay you for the leads. And I explained that wasn't in their best interests. That wasn't the way they should do it. But that kind of was why we've had such a problem with referrals, because it was easier to pay someone else to do it that can't be done anymore which is why the system i'm sharing with you now of of getting a new tactic getting the right tactics getting it up and running and then getting a supplier to run it so that you just manage the performance of that campaign by reviewing statistics every month is the way forward it's the way it has to be it's the way it should always have been and now it will be um, which is why joint ventures re referrals relationships people are so other people already have your clients somewhere. So if it, for conveyancing, that could be removal companies as well as estate agents. It's about now having to do legwork for those sorts of things. And that might not be your legwork. It might be saying, OK, if we're now having to be act more like a business, we need a business development person that goes out and meets people and makes relationships that last, not just based on money, but on mutual benefit. Um, it involves advertising in the right places and one of the best things you can do is put in place a system that converts more leads from existing inquiries <clears throat> as one of the earlier questions said lots of solicitors chased after new leads and not doing more with clients you've already got well in between that is converting more leads from existing inquiries so that means speaking to them as quickly as possible because if they come through the web they won't wait it means emailing them immediately what you've discussed and making it very personal not standard letter it also means sending them something in the post because if you're not doing that your and your competitors are who am i going to choose as my professional advisor you or smithers jones if they've taken the time to write to me and send me a brochure which backs up their expertise and has some lovely testimonials in it which firm looks better um, so working on converting existing leads is a big area to spend some time on. Um, this person here said they're interested in flyers, leaflets, commercial solicitor. Fantastic. Um, as I said when I touched on the website content, make it all about your client's biggest pain, biggest problem. Speak to clients that you've taken on from other solicitors and say, if you've got a commercial solicitor, you might be concerned about how you change, how difficult it is. Don't worry, we've got a conversion process. We'll take everything from your old solicitor. It'll be easy for you. Um, so start by talking about them. Make it very relevant. And, and you absolutely, as a commercial solicitor, need brochures. Is there still room for a high street solicitor? What's the best form of marketing? I think I've covered the best forms of marketing so far. Um, Shopfront, if you've got one, as we saw for DWS solicitors, make use of it. Make sure you've got a list of your services so that people know what you do. Make sure you have an A board that says, please walk in, free inquiries, no obligation. You, people are still wary of solicitors. As I said about the website forms, they're wary of spending money. So make sure you have um, that sprayed over the front of your, your office um, that people actually come in. Um, and how do you market a personal injury firm within a high street firm? Well, you've got the beauty of a database with lots of different clients on it who didn't know you did personal injury. So Talking about that every month in your monthly newsletter is a massive plus. Sending out brochures about your personal injury service to non-PI clients. All of these things work, but it takes time and it takes momentum. And I always say marketing needs momentum and perfection kills momentum. Um, one of the biggest problems solicitors have is, is that they want everything to be perfect. Um, and, and coming on to my next slide, that's not always going to be the case. You can and you will make mistakes with your marketing, but that's okay. It's not a legal document. It's not a, a litigation case that you're going to be struck out for. You're allowed to make mistakes in marketing because most of them can be fixed very quickly and very economically. The other thing you'll notice if you start doing more marketing and suddenly start advertising in different places or engaging search engine marketing company or, or pay-per-click um, is that people suddenly feel they have the right to comment on your business. They're your friends and family say, oh, I've seen you are popping up everywhere on the web. You're getting on my nerves. Um, fantastic. Well, they're seeing you. Um, and they're not the people that are going to take your business forward. They're not the people that are going to make 2013 a great year for you. So smile and, and move on to the next topic of conversation. Um, next thing, some people feel the need to, or the right to moan or complain. And that's so true in every life. Just just the other night on the one show, which I caught five minutes off, they're talking about comic relief. And you've got Richard Curtis, who's made four weddings and a funeral, Notting Hill, and, and has made some very good money from that and set up comic relief years ago. And they had a lady on the sofa, an older lady that sat on the sofa. And she, she said, oh, I don't really know your film. She said, oh, I've seen that one, Notting Hill. I didn't like it. It was boring. 
she felt she had the right to complain on national telly and, and say she didn't like it. Well, she didn't need to. She's not the sort of person, if your clients do that, when you send them something, um, you'll generally find that it's the moaners, complainers that spend the least and cause the biggest headache. So farewell, there's an unsubscribe button on the email or we'll take you off our database. We won't contact you ever again. The other thing about marketing, when you start doing more, you get better. You'll find you're, you're better organized at finding good suppliers. You'll know the signs to find a good supplier to do everything for you, and different aspects of it. Um, and the other part is it can feel lonely. You know, you, you're running a business on your own. You're making the decisions and you're um, sometimes struggling with what you could, should be doing. Um, so it can feel lonely, which is moving on to... Um, the, the next part of a new way of working to make sure you have your best 2013. I like this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. You need to you need a support network that actually can help you with this marketing. Um, I know in running my business and that, that you know, I can't do everything alone, even though I've um, run my business for 10 years now. I, I know what I'm doing. I still engage a consultant to help me. I still work with other business owners in different sectors to challenge each other and push us to make sure we're we're always growing our businesses and learning and improving the way we do everything from, from marketing to the delivery of the service, which is just another, another part of the marketing. Um, so I'm launching a group consulting group. And what does that actually mean? It means it, it, getting a group of solicitors together, non-competing solicitors, so that you can share, bounce ideas off each other and find out what's working for someone else in perhaps a completely different sector. If a commercial solicitor has tried one marketing tactic that's worked a trick and you're a personal injury solicitor, you can apply that and you can adapt it. But if you're not speaking openly with other solicitors, you're missing these opportunities. So sharing what works and what doesn't work can save you a fortune, perhaps more importantly. Um, you agree to take action when you do group consulting. You're, open, you're, you're not just agreeing to yourself. And I, I had a chat with someone earlier this morning who's one of my consultancy clients who I've got a call with later, who I know is going to have a fantastic 2013, but he admitted in the last month that, that stuff had got in the way and he hadn't quite done everything that, that we were said he was going to do before our chat today. Um, stuff will always get in the way. It's amazing how quickly you can get rid of that stuff and those distractions when you've got to go back to a group and, and own up to what you've done. Have you done what you said you were going to do? Um, and that sort of commitment is, is will make you take the steps that you should be taking, which you know you should be taking to grow your business and to have your best year yet. Um, you help, you've got a sport network and someone that is controlling the group, making sure you turn up and are accountable to everyone else in it. As I say, I've been a, a member of a group for ages. I'm currently a member of a group which I pay um, for the privilege, which is well worth the money, which has got marketing consultants in the UK, Australia, America, Israel. Um, and, you know, we're, we're all marketing consultants. Well, we should know how to get clients, shouldn't we? Um, and we do. But there's always things we can do better, differently, different ways of promoting ourselves and explaining to people what we do and how we help. Um, so, you know, I accept and you know, I would be a hypocrite if I <laughs> if I sold consultancy and didn't engage in it, which I do. If I sold group consultancy and didn't engage in it, which I do, I do it because it makes my business better, which is why I'm offering it to you. Um, so here's why it works. The most important part are group sharing. I can give you ideas, but often I found with certainly with marketing solicitors, when members share their story of trying a marketing tactic, that's when other solicitors that are members of marketing solicitors suddenly go, oh my goodness, Nate, you've been banging on about that for ages, but now I've seen someone else try it and use it and have results. I now understand it. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I did, but hearing someone else apply it and use it and get results through it helps that solicitor say, now I get it. That puts it into perspective for me. I know how I can use that in my business now. You get to become best in breed. So instead of just doing what you think is best, you get to bounce off your idea with five other solicitors and me and make sure that every time you do something, it is the best it can be. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's better off starting with it being as good as it can be rather than the bad and going better. So you get that as part of the group. And the most important point, which I've already mentioned several times and will do, is this group accountability. You know, we need to be accountable. Um, we need to be held accountable. We're, we're trained from a very early age that we're accountable to people. And I always thought that um, running my own business, well, I'm accountable to me. Everything I do in my business comes back to me, so I don't need to be accountable to anyone. But I very quickly realized that having that, that business coach consultant every month to check I've done what I said what I was going to do made a massive difference to my business from years two, three onwards when I engaged them. Um, and I have done ever since. 
it's having that person to be accountable to is so important we're taught that you know when we were kids it's our parents we go to school it's the teachers the headmaster when you get a job it's your employer um, and when you do litigation it's the district judge you have so many people you're accountable to but it makes things happen i know from my litigation days when i had a court deadline i got everything done that i needed to get done and that's what having this date in your diary for group consultancy will do for you as well and if you do all that you get all these parts on the left here you get improved cash flow happier staff happier clients more profits more importantly perhaps more time for you to do the things you like to do whether that's spend more time on marketing or spend more time on management or spend more time fee earning it doesn't matter because you've got people doing your marketing for you and managing your marketing processes so you are just managing them they're another staff member to control they're a supplier they're external but you're still in control of them um, a couple more points on that that I've, I've been a member of um, groups as say and, and a couple of years ago or three years ago now I set up a group of uh, marketing consultants in different industries uh, which I ran for as a group consulting model someone joined that group had been spending two thousand pounds a year uh, to be a member of someone else's uh, cons group consulting group um, and in that first day he said he'd got more value from from my session than he had from the twenty four thousand pounds a year guy um, because I was very focused on this being all about results, implementation, making things happen. Um, another of the chaps in that group, um, about two years ago, we had a meeting in the Cotswolds. He uh, was in Scotland. We had weather like we've had recently, heavy snow. He couldn't get a flight to the group. He decided to drive through the note, the, drive through the note, drive through the snow, drive through the night um, to get to this group. And so he, he literally had about two hours sleep in his car because the hotel was shut when he got there. Um, but it was that important to him that he came. Um, so, you know, I've seen the power and I've, I've run these groups and I've seen how well they work. And I've, I ran that marketing consultancy group to get to the point that I know how to make it work best for you, which is where we are now. Um, so why would you do it now? It's a more challenging marketplace. There is more competition all of the time. You've got the, the normal entrants like Quality Solicitors, Brilliant Law. I'm just waiting for the launch of Awesome Lawsome, which I'm sure is just around the corner. Um, but you don't need those brands so often I'm contacted by people and, and they're, they're scared and they think well we have to do something that's not the answer in my opinion I want people like you to survive I want independent law firms to survive I know you can do because I'm working now already with 20 firms that are doing fantastically and, and lots more on marketing for solicitors you can do it but you have to change you can't keep doing the Einstein thing of doing what you've always done the world has changed and the way people buy legal services has changed so you have to have suppliers managing your marketing and be in control of it without doing any of it there's people coming in with bigger budgets. Now, that's quite a good thing, actually, because the likes of the co-op will alert people to the fact that they need a will. Um, and perhaps more people will finally make wills, as we know they should. But it doesn't mean they're always going to go to the co-op. So if you have a bigger profile, people will find you as well. Um, and people are coming in with all sorts of different ideas about how they can market legal services, including one of the former dragons, uh, I can't remember his name, who's, who's getting involved in legal services. So they will look at things completely differently. Um, you need to do more, but you don't have to do it all alone. So what actually does this program involve? Um, well, if you apply to join, and I'm only looking for six firms, and, and we've got hundreds on the webinar, I'm only looking for six um, and this is the launch group offer. Um, it's a 90 minute one on one call with me where we'll work out your bespoke marketing action plan. We'll decide what you need to do to get your firm to where you want it to be in 2013. After that, there'll be one group consulting session each month. One month, it will be everyone on the call running through their um, what they're supposed to have done, the results they've had, the struggles they've had, how to get past them, the successes they've had, which is the most important part. Um, then the alternate month will be a 60 to 90 minute question and answer call to make sure everyone is working towards the next call, is achieving and doing what they're supposed to have done. There's one-on-one -on -one email support with me and emergency telephone access to me throughout the program. I want this to work. At the end of six months, I want you all to be raving fans of this program because it has changed your business and pushed you well on the way to having your best year yet. So I'm going to push you hard to make this happen. Um, there'll be a group forum for you to, to chat things through between each session to keep things moving. Perhaps one of the most important things bearing in mind the whole process I suggest you follow is to, to outsource all of your marketing. You get access to my suppliers who I've tried and tested and I promise you spent tens of thousands of my own money using to find the right ones you get access to those which which i don't let everyone have access to because i don't want them to get so busy that they're not not any good anymore um, and you get a special launch offer price which is never to be repeated again now bear in mind i said that the chat was a member of a group that charged two thousand pounds a month 
my daily rate is 1500 plus uh, I do an hourly call for 250 pounds this service launch offer price and it will go up when I run the, the later groups um, you get access to, to probably one of the best services I offer because it's more than me it's a whole group of you working together um, for just 450 pounds a month um, it's a minimum six month commitment because I want to give it time to work but I know it will um, but you think about that it's 450 pounds a month you sell two wills it's a free service you, to, you sell get one personal injury case a month it's a free service from what you learn in the group you'll easily get your money back but 10 times more and there's a guarantee as there are with all of my services because I know it'll work for you I love these groups and I, I love being a member of one and I'm excited to be running one with you um, so for 450 pounds a month it, it has to be I hope one of the easiest decisions you make if this appeals to you if it doesn't that's fine go off and do what I've told you anyway but it will pay for itself and it certainly that should be the way you look at it what else will you get from this group you'll know what to do so many times solicitors come to me and say I don't really know where I should start Nick what should I be doing where should I go um, and you will be told exactly what you need to do and where you should go um, you'll know what you need to do first to get from A to B you're accountable to me and to the rest of the group so the stuff that we all have that does get in the way you'll work your way around it you'll be motivated to, to get things happening a lot of solicitors I meet are just a bit tired and get to a point they're a bit fed up with where they find themselves and the struggles and the challenges you'll be reinvigorated and you will certainly not be alone in that reinvigoration you'll all lift each other up and that's the whole point of group consulting that, that there's so much extra benefit from having you all involved in the process um, a couple of, couple of people I've worked with recently um, I just thought I'd flash up on screen Michael wanted that marketing action plan he wanted to know what to do he didn't know where to start he came and and he got it and he said some very nice things about me and he knows exactly what he needs to do now he needed that plan and that's the the first part is our call and I should say it's all um, using go to meeting you don't have to even leave your desk you don't have to drive for four hours to get to me um, I wanted it to be this way because I know that time is precious so I want you to be able to make these calls knowing that you don't have to leave there I'll even give you a lovely headset so that you can talk and communicate and have your hands free for taking notes because you'll need that um, Patrick is a cracking chap and he's just about to have uh, his best year yet by a mile um, he might not know it but I know he is he's a really nice guy I class him as a friend uh, he's in <laughs> he says I'm enthusiasm he is because if you give you t I tell him what to do he, he loves to go off and do it get it done and see the results um, what will you be saying if you join this group consulting group what will you be saying about it in six months time so whether you're thinking that's a good thing to do or to find out more about or whether you're not there I know there has been things I've said in here that will have struck home and made you think crikey yes I should be doing that so please promise me don't just say to me you've had a good webinar um, tell me you're actually going to do something different from next week take Peter Drucker's words and change the way you do things because unless you change things you're going to keep repeating the circle keep riding the roller marketing roller coaster and not get the results you want and you deserve you know you do this for a living you enjoy what you do you should be able to enjoy it a lot more when it's going better you can have that but you have to do things differently if you want to find out more and, uh, and find out more about this scheme, go to my website, go to samsonconsulting.co.uk forward slash 2013. Click on the Make 2013 the Best Year Yet and you will see all the details of the scheme and how you can fill in a very short application form to set up a telephone consultation with me at a mutually agreed time um, when I can talk you through. Uh, the scheme in more detail make sure it's suitable for you because I don't want people on if it's not going to be suitable I don't want you doing it I want it to be for people that will make this work so we'll have a frank and open conversation even if it's not suitable for you I'll give you pointers as to what you need to do to have your best year yet in 2013 so quick recap on what we've been covering your way forward in 2013 don't do the same things you've always done you've got to get into automation you've got to make your marketing work with or without your input whether you're there or not things need to happen so that you get more clients coming through the door you've got to choose the right marketing tactics and the system is you know how did you hear about the tactic is it push pull is it attraction marketing or are you forcing someone who isn't even thinking about legal services to come to you it's not going to work is your website producing 50% of your client leads if not it's the easiest place to go and fix things it should be 
Um, but you need a balance. You know, don't ever rely on just one form of marketing, whether it's one referral or one thing that's working. If you're doing website marketing, pay per click, do search engine optimization as well. Once you've proved it works, don't be reliant on just one method. I always bang on about don't rely on one. It's a dangerous number. The human body tells you that we have two nostrils, we have two ears, we have two eyes, we have two, um, two lungs, two kidneys, two arms, two legs, because we'd created so that if one of them breaks we can still keep going if you decide to give one of your kidneys to auntie mabel you can still keep going um, so don't let your marketing be too reliant on any one aspect or one tactic use stories in your newsletters in all of your marketing so that people get to know a bit more about you without it being look at me i'm brilliant but more about why that's relevant to them why that story matters and i told you my story at the beginning use those other methods of marketing and as i said one of the best things you can do is spend more money on converting existing leads because it doesn't cost anything don't forget, as you do more marketing, you will upset some people. That's OK. Um, and the only final thing to say is join me. You know, have a look at that page. Go to samsonconsulting.co.uk forward slash 2013. Click on make 2013 the best year yet. If you like what you see there, fill in the application. Let's have a chat. Let's see if it can work for you. I know that the people that join will have their best year yet in 2013. I know from experience how effective group consulting is. I'm excited to be running it. If you don't fancy that, please take some action from today don't just sit there and do the same things don't use the excuse of the media that we're into a triple recession and and nothing can happen and you won't get any work that's not true there's plenty of work out there if you're not getting it it's through what you're what you're doing as opposed to it's what you're not doing as opposed to what you're doing so you need to change what you're doing and do something different that's the the moral of this story um there's the website link for you. I hope you found this useful, engaging. There'll be a short survey pop up on your screen. If you can take a minute to fill it in, I'd be very grateful. That would be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, as some people did from the webinar yesterday. Um, this is the second day in a row I've run it, and this is the second or two, and I'm stopping. I didn't expect you to come down the line 50-50 for doing a webinar live twice in a row. It's not for the faint-hearted, I can tell you, uh, but I've made it. So I hope you've had a lovely sandwich, lovely lunch hour. I hope you've learned something, um, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Um, thank you for your time. Goodbye.